Hi guys, so welcome back to the channel, and anyone new, well it's good to see you too. So this week, obviously I've made this little chap. That's right, it's an orc riding a T-Rex through a portal. What could be more normal than that? I've been wanting to make one of these for a while, and as it's October, and I'm enjoying painting figures, I thought, yeah, this is the time to do it. And there we go, as you can see, little LEDs to light it up, just to add that little bit of, uh, well, little bit of wow, I guess. And I'm really pleased how this chap turned out. So, if you want to sort of join along with me and make one of these yourselves, this is what you're going to need. So, starting with some, uh, some resin. Obviously, you kind of need the 3D printer to go along with the resin. And you also need some, um, well, some more resin, but this time it's a clear resin. So, this stuff I've had for quite some time, but still worked okay, which I'm pretty pleased with. Then you need, obviously, a bits box uh, with orcs. Well, unless you're making something else. Uh, but in this case, obviously, I've got an orc riding my T-Rex. And yeah, go for the orc bits bots. And obviously LEDs, these are nice and cheap. I get these from Amazon. Uh, basically, as you're probably aware, if you do watch this channel, I get everything from Amazon. And obviously you're going to need a load of inks and paints. And obviously my go-to are definitely contrast paints, speed paints, because obviously I do the slap chop uh, painting technique. And obviously to paint with, you need, well, a brush. <laughs> and just to clean up the model, uh, I'm just going to any bits on him. I've got some um, cutters and obviously a scalpel. Obviously be careful not to stab yourself. So far I've been pretty good. So I started by going through my bits box. Um, as you can see my bits box is kind of orcs. Although I have just recently separated them all out now. So I've got the obviously bodies and I've got heads. And then I've got some other ones with like arms and legs and obviously weapons. Which is obviously we need. Uh, especially with the orcs because obviously they do like their dacker. And yeah it's just a case of going through, picking out what I liked. Um, I kind of want my guy to look a little bit, bit more old school with just your basic sort of weapons. Uh, and that's why I've gone for like the axe and the sword. Um, yeah, just I didn't really want him to have like gun guns. I prefer the idea of sort of more basic materials as obviously he's riding the T-Rex, kind of like you do. So these figures have been in this bits box for, well, a good couple of years now. So then you need a little bit of uh, cleaning up, tidying up, and then yeah, straight into gluing them together. So obviously I've gone for some legs here that are kind of wide apart, just because I want him to be sitting on the other uh, T-Rex. And yeah, I've obviously got a variety of pieces here. Um, the head, I think was it the Cromlech heads? Um, not 100% sure. Again, I've had these bits sitting around for, like I say, a good couple of years. Um, and the main reason for that is I never used to like painting miniatures. As much as I love the look of these little chaps, when it came to painting them, um, yeah, I was pants. I would spend two, three hours easily painting a figure uh, not be happy with the end result and then that kind of put me off well painting them because uh, obviously you don't want to spend that much time and then just well not enjoy the thing so 3d printed on my anycubic photon mono x um yeah i've got my little t-rex here uh, there was obviously a full body of this guy but i took him into a sort of free cheap package um just to cut him in half basically so yeah i only need the front half coming out i did want to try and get his legs to sort of come through as well but he wasn't in a very good standing position to make it look like he was sort of walking towards you. So that's why I've just got his body. And yeah, the portal, again, I'll leave links, guys, to um, where you can get these things from. They were Thingiverse, so nice and cheap, um, because they were free. <laughs> and that's why I love Thingiverse. And now onto the slap chop painting technique, which has basically given me a new lease of life when it comes to painting. Because uh, I say, I never used to like painting, didn't enjoy it, mainly because I didn't get any good results. Um, but now, with this technique, I know it's not a new technique and it goes by other names, but I'm still going to call it the slap chop painting technique just because, well, that's what got me into it. And simply, it's a case of obviously priming all your miniatures in black and then going over dry brushing. As you can see, I'm dry brushing with a grey. Um, I have started experimenting with dry brushing with other colours. Um, doesn't seem to matter too much. Obviously, it can affect the top colour. Um, but yeah, basically, dry brush with grey. And then go over and dry brush with a white. Um, as obviously when you dry brush in, it does leave all the nooks and crannies still nice and dark. Um, plus with this technique, you can go, you can be heavy handed or light handed or almost a bit of both really, kind of works really well. Um, yes, yeah, so there's no real wrong way of doing this, I don't think. Uh, and basically if I can do it, then yeah, anyone can definitely do this. Because uh, yeah, I don't have any skills at all when it comes to painting. Um, and as I say, if you look at some of my older videos that are sort of like a year or so old, You'll constantly hear me saying how much I hate and detest painting. Um, yeah, which is why I say these figures I've had sitting around in a drawer for the last couple of years. 
So for the metal parts on the, uh, the portal, as obviously we don't have any contrast sort of metallic paints, I'm just going to dry brush um, yeah, any of the metal bits, which is this sort of main outer bit, and all these sort of spiky bits. Um, I, mean, I guess these could be painted however you wanted, but I like the idea of them being sort of like a metallic sort of thing. So yeah, dry brushing with some good old silver, and then once that's dried, then going over and dry brushing. I think I use copper. I always forget. Sometimes I use copper, sometimes I use bronze, maybe gold. Oh, there you go, a bit of bronze on this one. And again, a bit of dry brushing. Um, again, it's another sort of technique that I've always loved doing, um, is dry brushing. Um, so previously to sort of painting miniatures, I used to like doing rust buckets. Um, mainly because that was my only sort of painting that I could do. And generally the rust bucket painting would be a case of going over, sort of painting the silver or the metal bits like I've just done here, and then applying loads of sort of browns and rusty bits. Um, so yeah, make it look like a rust bucket. So for the ground here, obviously using the contrast paints, um, even though I quite like how it looks without putting the paint on, um, I just think this will help sort of go, again, go into the nooks and crannies and make them bits darker. Uh, it's all about the nooks and crannies, guys. Keep them dark. Um, yeah, no, so this, this technique, it really has given me a new, a new love of the hobby. Um, because like I, said, I always used to shy away from painting miniatures. Um, I only ever had a few painted, and I say they, they weren't exactly ones that I'd want to show off to anyone. Um, but yeah, this slap chop painting technique, uh, it's like, for me, it's worked wonders. It won't have the same effect for everyone. Some people won't like it. And I know a lot of people don't like the name. Um, so maybe I'm just going to say it a bit more. The slap chop painting technique. There we go. Let's just keep saying it. So yeah, get it. It's, honestly, it's so easy. Prime in black, dry brush, get your speed paints, contrast paints, dipping inks, whichever ones you've got. There's quite a few different sort of brands that they're now doing these kind of paints. And then, yeah, just paint over with these. Um, and that's pretty much job done. It is. It's so so simple. It's untrue, which is why I say these these figures. Um, basically, I did the whole thing in one day, um, and that includes the I think it's about five hours to 3D print the parts, um, and then say a little bit of time to sort of glue them together, all the rest of it, and then yeah, painting. Yeah, definitely under an hour to paint the portal, my orc, um, and this T-Rex, simply because you are just putting paint straight over. Um, and yeah, job done. So yeah, the whole thing was done in a day because then I, I actually got the resin poured the same day that I printed the figures. Um, so then the next day it was a case of taking the resin, um, tidying up the resin bits uh, and yeah, taking some pictures, stick it on the old uh, spinny wheel, using my little fog machine. There's a video guys, if you're interested in, in making your own sort of homemade fog machine, uh, there's a video out where I make, made one, very simple. Um, basically, it was just a vape um, sort of pen, and then one of these little things from a fish tank that blows air, um, and simple as, and a little 3D printed box I, I did for it. So yeah, go check that video out as well, guys. As I am now loving painting miniatures, um, something I've always wanted to make was a Warhammer chess set, um, but I was kind of always put off by the fact that I'd have to paint 16 miniatures, whereas I am now doing painting 16 miniatures so yeah guys if you want to sort of see behind the scenes of what I'm currently working on then why not consider becoming a patron like these guys that are flashing on the screen now it's only a couple of pound a month and for that you get to see behind the scenes pictures and stuff of what I'm working on I am going to be doing a, um, a patron only video every month soon as well so yeah you to check out that um, but yeah basically you get to see what I'm working on before it comes out on YouTube which is pretty cool and any money I get from that basically I use to go and buy more bits and pieces and yeah, many thanks to Easy Roller Dice and Any Cubic as well for obviously also sponsoring me. So I have got this sort of go-to green now that I use with the Orcs. Um, it's a Plague Bearers contrast paint, although I was starting to run out. So I, I have actually mixed in a few other um, a few other paints. So it's a bit of a, a combination now of a few colours. But this is my go-to green uh, for all my Orcs, just because I, I really love it. Although I am considering doing... Um, Doing some blue orcs. Uh, hopefully they won't come out looking like Smurfs, and uh, they will look a bit more sort of ferocious. Um, but yeah, I've always wanted to do some blue orcs, so I'm going to do them soon. Guys, if any of you guys do any blue orcs, by all means let me know, or, or even any other colours. Um, I've only ever seen green or blue, but I'm sure some guys might mess about with purple, uh, maybe yellows. I'm not too sure. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments uh, what kind of orc colours you've tried and what um, well, what you like really. As I have now got quite a lot of the uh, the kill teams painted, 
I am looking at doing more sort of like little dioramas like this one. Um, and maybe some like a little bit bigger dioramas. So guys, if there's anything you want to see me make on this channel, by all means let me know in the comments. Um, I always read all the comments and where possible I always respond to all the comments. Um, so yeah guys, let me know what you want to see me make and I'll possibly have a go at making it. Just because I, I want to make some more little dioramas with some of the um, well, some of the figures that I'm now getting left over from the bits box. Uh, not just orcs, I have got space marines and a few other things. Um, so yeah, let me know what you want, want to see me make and well, I'll have a go at doing it. I'm also going to be doing some um, scratch building soon as well. Um, the guys over on Patreon, I did a little poll earlier um, and they've sort of like suggested what I should make. So yeah, there should be some uh, scratch building coming soon. So yeah, scratch building, kit bashing, diorama making, um, or if anything else you want to see me do on this channel. Um, I can't juggle, so don't ask for any of that. Um, but yeah, guys, let me know in the comments uh, what you'd like to see me do. And just because I haven't said it for a while, I am doing the uh, the slap chop painting technique here, guys. Um, yeah, so I think this first was given this sort of phrase by um, the guy over at Honest Wargamer. Although it wasn't actually his video that I first saw. Um, to be honest, I can't even remember who it was I saw. I saw someone else do it, and then I tried it, absolutely loved it. Uh, but then someone left a little comment saying, why didn't I credit the the guy that came up with the, the term? Um, it's like, well, I didn't credit the guy because I didn't know who came up with it. But yeah, then I had a little look and it says the Honest Wargamer. So there's a link in the description to his channel and his original video. Uh, but as I say, I do know that this obviously is a technique that's been around for donkeys. Um, and I've also put a link down below to, to um, Dana Howell for doing something um, pretty similar or pretty much the same um, by basically the, the underpainting. Um, to give the sort of same technique. And obviously I know the slap chop refers to that sort of thing that dices up, well, vegetables and all kinds of other stuff. And the funny thing is, I had a little look at the uh, the infomercial earlier on today, just to sort of check out what it exactly was. Um, and it's something that I actually had. But mine obviously was the UK version, so it wasn't called the slap chop. But um, same sort of thing, same size. Yeah, you just use it to, um, well, you slap the top of it and it chops up your veggies and your bits and pieces. So obviously that's why it's called Slap Chop. So yeah, cracking on with this guy, getting through him. Um, there's a few obviously colours here and there where I don't use contrast paints, dipping inks and all the rest of it. Um, I just use normal colours. Uh, but again, if you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll know that I use the normal colours. But then because it obviously looks too sort of neat and precise, I then go over with a nice brown wash just to dirty everything up and make everything look like it's got sort of highlights, shadows, all that good stuff, really. Um, I say, yeah, I say this thing was painted in under an hour. Um, but if I had not done the slap chop paint technique, this would have taken me, well, I, I hate to think, um, because I know it would have taken me at least three hours, four hours, maybe more. Um, again, I wouldn't have been happy with the end results. And I mean, that's why the painting used to take me so long, because I'd paint something and I think, oh, no, I don't like that. Let's change it or do this or do that. Uh, and then by the end of it, say three, four hours later, it would be caked in paint and yeah, it would look pants. So yeah, good old wash. Um, and as anyone knows my channel, I do like to put on a lot of wash. <laughs> um, I need to get shares in it really so I can get more or well, bigger tubs. Um, again, everyone's got their own painting techniques. So what I'm doing isn't a this is how it needs to be done. This is a this is how I do it and this is how I love it. Um, and I say, I've just got a newfound fondness and love for painting miniatures, which is why I have painted so many in the last, well, six, seven weeks. Um, I have painted, well, tons. Whereas in the last sort of couple of years, I've painted, I've probably painted less than a dozen miniatures in two years. And now I've painted, was it six, seven kill teams, whole variety of single little orcs. Um, and yeah, now this little chap. Which say I'm really, really, really pleased with. So yeah, a little bit of dry brushing back over the um, stone bits just to finish them off. Um, loving how the the portal looks. Say so just simply dry brushing the silver and the uh, the copper. Um, yeah, and I'm loving it. So this probably took quite a little bit of time. I was actually putting the uh, the wire in um, just because obviously I wanted it to sort of light up. Uh, but unfortunately, the battery pack on this was too big to actually hide inside the base of the diorama. Um, so that's why obviously I've got the lead sort of feeding up through the hole that I'm building. Um, but yeah, so that's all battery pack is sort of like dangling sort of outside it. 
which is a shame because I do like to normally hide these kind of things. Uh, so in this case, the, the base was just so small. So yeah, I basically just fed through the whole of the wire. Um, I say this bit probably took not quite as long as the painting, uh, but it did take a reasonable amount of time. Um, because then what I'm going to do is obviously glue uh, the wire to the inside. And then sort of like wrap it round, wrap it round, glue a little bit, wrap it, glue it. Um, and it, it worked out really well that all the lights then got spaced out evenly. Um, I would like to take credit and say I planned this. Uh, but no, it just, um, as Bob Ross would say, one of those happy little accidents. So this is a bit of obviously pouring the resin. If you've seen any of my resin uh, videos that I've done, I think I've only done about two or three, um, they generally end in disaster. Uh, this one wasn't too bad, um, but yeah, when it comes to resin, uh, I, I don't normally have a very good success rate. I mean, because I didn't have to pour too much in this one, that's why it wasn't too bad. Although I did still have a little bit of a leak, um, so stuff came out. So I was watching this for about an hour, um, and I literally kept topping it up. Because the leak wasn't big, but I think if I'd left it overnight, there would have been very little left. So yeah, doing the little swells, put a little bit of um, ink or paint on my uh, my little stick, and then just putting it in and swizzing it around. So yeah, so it came out, the light still works, so I was pleased with this, because this is the next day, um, and this is obviously the, always a worrying bit, because I'll actually put this onto um, a sheet of glass, which probably wasn't the best idea, because if it had been on plastic, I could have possibly flexed the plastic um, to get this off a lot easier. Again, this is one of these hobbies that I love, because it is all about learning... Um, trying new things, obviously watching other YouTubers, see what they do, but I always find the best way to learn is to, well, crack on, do it yourself, because then if you do make any mistakes, you definitely learn by them, because you won't want to do them again. So yeah, this was just a case of easing this uh, the scraper underneath, bit by bit, um, just because, well, one, I didn't want to break my little model, and I don't want to break the bit of glass either, because <laughs> uh, either one of them would have meant, well, a lot of mess. And one of them could have meant a little trip to uh, A&E. But um, no, per perseverance, and he finally came off, which I was very relieved at. A um, little bit of tidying up at the back, but not too much. Basically, I had to put a bit more paint on. And then, yeah, last few steps, gluing this fella on. So I really would have liked to have done it so I could have had his, his legs coming out. Um, but yeah, the legs on the actual original model uh, were sort of like crouched in and didn't really look like they'd look very good sort of stepping through the portal. So these guys are only on the bases with like a little drop of glue and generally come off nice and easy. Um, it's more of a case of making sure I don't stab myself which is why it can sometimes take a bit longer. And yeah there we go so he just needs a bit of gluing as well. Um, but say so before I do that obviously this UV resin stuff I absolutely love this. Um, probably need to get more of it. So I've put a little bit of this around the uh, the T-Rex Again, just look like he's sort of stepping through and part of obviously the, um, well, whatever this warp portal sort of thingy is, um, it's sort of like coming through with him. So this UV resin stuff, I absolutely love it. I need to get new batteries for my little uh, torch. As you can see, it's normally a lot brighter than that. Um, and obviously it normally dries a lot quicker than it did when I was doing it. Um, but yeah, this UV resin, I think I've had this little bottle for about two years. This is a lot of stuff I've had, I've had for a good couple of years. But the good thing is, it all seems to still be um, working. I'm not sure if there's like a, a date on any of this stuff, but um, yeah, no, it all seems to be pretty cool. And then just on the back, because say the back was a little bit messy, say where I had to obviously scrape the thing off. So that's why I've gone round and done like swirly pattern, again with the UV resin. But this kind of works out really well, because it looks like the back, um, well, is doing some sort of uh, weird looking thing as well, which is pretty cool. Because it did look a little bit messy, um, I thought I'd then go over it with one of the speed paints. And this is where, again, the speed paints I absolutely love uh, for painting over, obviously, clear stuff. Just because you can still see what it was underneath through. Um, and it works really well because, obviously, when you put the lights on, the lights still light up um, and you can see them perfectly. So, yeah, contrast paints on clear stuff is, uh, is fantastic. And, yeah, there we go, guys. That's, um, that's him done.
So I'm really pleased with how he came out. Um, obviously the paint job I'm absolutely loving and say sometimes I can't believe that I painted this just because it looks so different and so much better than I could have ever done in the past. Um, and yeah, and the fact that the resin came out because I say I've not had much luck <laughs> with resin prints or doing anything with resin either. So yeah, very pleased with how that's come out. And yeah, loving this. So yeah, guys, definitely let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and obviously this diorama. Uh, what you thought of the painting technique and if there's anything you want to sort of see me make, guys, say let me know, because um, I do want to make more sort of dioramas, whether they're small little things like this or much bigger things. And yeah, as you can see, I love this smoke machine, and I, I do go a bit nuts with it sometimes. So yeah, guys, if you want to make a little homemade smoke machine for your sort of projects, so you can take uh, photos and videos, then check out that video. As well as obviously, guys, take a look at all my other videos. There's a couple on the screen now. Click one on one of those. Okay, guys, that's it. Bye for now.